الله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على رسوله وعلى الأئمة الميامين من آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم والعن أعداءهم Brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Continuing on with the discussion of the intention of one's fast, if a non-Muslim, for example, and this in many cases is a commonly asked question, if, if a non-Muslim embraces Islam during the holy month of Ramadan, that means he or she is now obliged to perform the obligatory fast because he or she is now a Muslim, they are what we say when we they are مخاطبين. They are now ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fast. They are obliged to undertake the wajib actions, whether it's prayers or fasting or what have you. If a Muslim embraces Islam during the holy month of Ramadan, that means he or she is now obliged to fast the holy month. Okay, so how do we calculate the, the amount of fast they must make up? First of all, generally, Al-Islam yajubbu ma qablah. One, when one converts and embraces Islam, Islam erases all before it. So everything before they became a Muslim, be it prayers, be it fasting, be it khums, be it zakat, be it hajj, is now erased. We begin calculating and we begin, and we begin counting from the time they became a Muslim. Secondly, if one embraces Islam at the time of noon prayers, for example, if one embraces Islam at the time of noon prayers or just before noon prayers, they make their intention to fast provided they have not, for example, eaten or drinking or done any mufattirat, undertaken any mufattirat, anything which makes their fast void. They make their intention and they begin their fast from there, from noon prayers, as a precaution. If, for example, no, they converted to Islam afternoon prayers. They converted to Islam at 3.30 in the afternoon. They continue their day as per usual and they be begin their fast. Of course, it is mustahab and in some cases even more than mustahab to refrain from eating and drinking. Inshallah, we'll get back to that uh, as in due date or in due course, inshallah, as time comes. But they may continue their fast making their intention at Adhan al-Dhuhr. And that is on the base of obligatory precaution, as I said. And if he or she does not observe the fast on that day, they must make up its qada. That is at the time of dhuhr. After dhuhr, inshallah, as a recommended precaution, they must make up their fast. If somebody is ill or and recovers from their illness before midday, before adhan of dhuhr, during the holy month of Ramadan, he or she has not, if he or she has not, undertaken a mufattir, eaten, drank, uh, traveled, um, for example, lied, kathib uh, ala ala made false uh, claims to Allah and the Ahlul Bayt alayhum then they must continue their fast from there. They should renew their intention and to fast, continue their fast that day. But if their recovery is, no, it's after Adhan al-Dhuhr, same ruling applies. If their recovery is after Adhan al-Dhuhr, it is not obligatory for them to fast on that day, due to the hesitation in their intention. Now the hesitation in someone's intention uh, plays a big role in the course of our fasting or any of our uh, ibadat, any of our worship. One must, in when, when it comes to fasting, one must, his intention must be smooth and steady. One must not have a shaky intention. For example, if I am to come home from work, for example. And I say, if my wife's made lunch, I will break my fast. If she hasn't made lunch, I'll continue fasting. There, my intentions become a bit shaky. Scholars say, once your intention becomes shaky, you are then deemed, your, your fast is then, is then deemed void. It is then batil. One must try to refrain from shaking his intention and remain with a firm and a steady intention. Yawm shak or the day of uncertainty, has a very unique hukum, has a very unique ruling. We mentioned previously uh, part of the ruling of Yom al-Shak. It goes like this. If somebody for some reason is in doubt whether or not it is the first day of Shahar Ramadan or the last day of Shahar Sha'ban, for example, in the West. In the West, when I was growing up, we, on several occasions this happened where 
There was no wukala maraja officers of the maraja. There was not many scholars, for example, who participated in the moon sighting. And on many occasions, we would fast half the day of Eid, not knowing whether it was Eid or not, until, you know, someone at midday said it was Eid. And, and even on the first day of Shah Ramadan, the same concept applied. According to the ruling of Ayatollah Sistani, it is not obligatory for them to fast on Yawm al-Shak. If, however, somebody wants to observe the fasting on Yawm al-Shak, in particular, he can do so with the intention of, he cannot do so with the intention of Shah Ramadan. He can't say, I'm going to fast, Ya Allah, this intention for Shah Ramadan. He does not know for a fact that it is Shah Ramadan. The intention on, on the day is made in one of two ways. The Yawm al-Shak, on the day of, of uncertainty, it is made, his, one must make his intention in one of two ways. One, number one, to have the intention that it, if it is the day of Shah, the first of Shah Ramadan, Shah Ramadan, then Ya Allah, I am fasting my obligatory fast. And if it is not, then I am fasting a mustahab, a recommended fast or a qada fast. This is one way. A second, to make the sole intention of either makeup or a makeup a qadha fast or a recommended fast, a mustahab fast. And if it so happens to be Shah Ramadan, to change his intention, and that is sufficient for that particular day. Now, if somebody is fasting on the day of uncertainty, Yom Shak, another ruling, and learns during that day that it is indeed the first of Shah Ramadan, he is fasting. Out of one of these two, he says, I am fasting a mustahab fast. And then he finds out it is Yom al-Shak. He finds out it is the first of Shah Ramadan, for example. He or she should convert their intention and continue their fast as per usual. Inshallah, their fasts are deemed valid. Somebody is uncertain or undecided in their intention. They have a shaky intention. Whether to break his fast or not. And it is the day of Shah Ramadan. So he decides to break his fast. I mentioned part of this hukum earlier. I'll go into a bit more detail. He decides to break his fast. So he heads, for example, towards the kitchen, then immediately changes his intention back to fasting. In both cases, his fast is deemed invalid and void. Why? Because the person's intention is no longer stable and one must maintain one of the main conditions, maintain the condition of a stable intention of fasting throughout the day of Shah Ramadan. Okay, so there, there are three types of fasts. In general, when someone is fasting, there are three types of fasts. Fast number one is the obligatory wajib fast, either the fast of Shah Ramadan, or one, must, one may make, is able to make a fast wajib upon himself, obligatory upon himself. How? For example, my son is sick and is mustahab to do this. The Ahl al salam did this. Ya Allah, if you cure my son, I will fast for three consecutive days. A nether, a vow. Lillahi alayya. If you can, the lillahi alayya is, is the term that must be used when making the nether. If you cure my son, Ya Allah, I will fast for three consecutive days. That's the obligatory fast. That fast then becomes obligatory upon you and you must fast it as soon as possible. That is the obligatory fast. Number two is the qadha fasts, the makeup fasts. Any fast that is wajib upon you that you do not fast, you must make it up in your lifetime and must pay kafara accordingly. Number three is the mustahab, the recommended fasts. And it is recommended to fast generally whenever. But the, the mustahabness or the istihbab grows and climaxes more and more when. On, on particular dates, like the 15th of Sha'ban, the 15th of, for example, Rajab, on uh, Thursdays, on the middle of the month. They are the three types of mustaha, they are the three types of fasts. Now, there are intention deadlines, we mentioned also earlier, I'll go into a bit more detail now. There are intention deadlines for these three fasts. When one is fasting an obligatory fast, he must make his intention before Adhan al-Fajr, before dawn, the adhan of dawn, the call the prayers of dawn, one must make his intention. If no, for example, he's fasting a, must, a qadha fast, scholars say that he is able to make his intention before adhan of dhuhr, any time before the call to prayer of noon, on the basis that he has not uh, committed any act which uh, invalidates his fast. If his fast is mustahab, as I mentioned, 
one must one is able to make his intention of siyam all the way through to Adhan al-Maghrib, even if it's one minute before the call to prayers of the evening or dusk, or, uh, or dusk, he, that, is, he, that, that is fine. There is no issue in that. Inshallah, we'll continue with our discussion in the coming episodes. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.